G'day guys, Steve Morgan here for Fishing Monthly Magazines and I'm at the launch of the new Mercury 3.4 litre four strokes and at Fishing Monthly we like to get the real brains behind the operation so I've dragged David Folksy who's the Chief Technology Officer for Mercury. Sounds like he should be working at NASA and probably you should be because you're behind some of the fantastic technology in this platform. Now we haven't had it on the water yet but there were some pretty cool claims made tonight. I want you to just run us through and ask you about a few of the technologies that are in here um, and explain, explain why they were the best solution to get this motor as it is. Now as the, this motor as it is now is the lightest in class, it weighs in at 215 kilograms, lightest four stroke in class, quietest four stroke in class, best torque, best acceleration, best economy. So my question to you is how do you put together all the technology to give us these things and we'll do it one at a time. Let's go through the, uh, through the let's get the stern drive technology which keeps the RPMs the same. What's it called and how does it work? Well, adaptive speed control is what it's called. So normally when you um, when you use a, a, an accelerator or a control, you command a particular uh, throttle opening on the engine. But that's not what happens in this case. In this case, when you um, ask for throttle, you actually command a particular engine RPM. And that's really important because it's, once it's locked in on that RPM, no matter what maneuver you perform, it automatically adds and subtracts torque to keep that RPM. So normally when you go into a turn, for example, you would be um, adding some throttle because the drag goes up. And when you exit the turn, you'd be subtracting throttle. But basically the control system does all that for you. It makes the whole experience easier and you know less stressful. And particularly for younger, maybe more uh, less experienced boaters, just a more you know easy experience. I think that's it's a real key. It's getting boaters into boating and then having them have the car experience exactly. when they're on the water. So we don't we don't need to be an experienced mariner to get the most out of our outboards. Now tell us the technical word for the uh, for the fuel optimization. Take us through that. The acronym for that. What was it? So we call it advanced range optimization, and we call it that really because you know some people appreciate fuel economy, but if you have a fixed tank, often people appreciate more range on a particular tank. But essentially, you know, in addition to um, making sure that all the basics with the engine are benchmark levels, low friction, best hydro, lightweight, we've applied an advanced version of lean burn technology, uh, which we call advanced range optimization. And essentially what it does is it, it um, works out which area of the um, engine, what we call the engine map, the RPM and load map, in which we can um, change the air fuel ratio for the benefit of fuel economy. And you'd like that to be as wide a range as you possibly can so you get the biggest benefit. The, the big deal is you don't want to have to, the cust we don't want the customer to know when they're entering and exiting that mode. So sometimes you can get an audible cue, the engine behaves or sounds slightly differently, or even a tactile cue, you know, maybe you get a jolt or something like that. So we have spent a huge amount of time and patented a number of algorithms that make sure that you can widen that lean map as far as possible, but the customer never knows that they're entering or exiting that mode. Again, it's all about giving the customer the benefits of the technology without even knowing it's there. Exactly right, yeah. I and mean, what we hope is that these kind of engines are so intuitive and so sociable, and, and you know, you get this uh, effortless performance and it does the right things for you all the time without you having to think about it, that we make boating you know, just a pleasurable and, and easier experience. Now, a final question I have for you is this, uh, this 3.4 litre engine, it's bigger than even the 400 Racing Verado, which is a, a 2.6 litre displacement. Obviously, the solution of big displacement four-stroke that without a supercharger is the solution for you guys. So the L4 Verado is going to be gone from the range when this thing hits the, uh, hits the deck. Why that direction of technology? Is it, is it the the, the, just the best way to get the most kilometers out of the least fuel? You know, we try and look at these things from a very holistic perspective. We look at uh, weight, we look at complexity, we look at fuel economy. Um, and we have found for these kind of engines that are, um, you know, they're, they're great performing engines, but they're not, you know, they're not racing engines, that that um, high displacement um, lightweight combination really works well. It's low complexity, it's extremely reliable, it's very durable. People like the fact that you can run really high torque at low RPMs. But um, there's a place for boosting and, and you know I, I wouldn't say in the future that some of these engines won't be boosted. If you want to extract high performance from something, boosting is a very very viable way to do it. Uh, but what we've 
um, kind of settled on really for these um, kind of products is that um, high displacement, lightweight is, is the best holistic combination of uh, attributes. Well, there you go. You've had it from the horse's mouth, from the Chief Technology Officer at uh, Mercury. David, thanks for your time this evening and uh, congratulations. I think it's a great looking motor. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate it very much.